Individual project by Super, not officially endorsed by Mojang or any third parties unless stated. This video is for entertainment and knowledge sharing only, not a substitute for formal education. Maintain bias or inaccuracies. Viewer discretion is advised. For details, please read description. Yo, what's up, guys? It's been a few months since my last video. As you can see, this is what I'm up to daily. It's all about addiction and laziness, cause honestly, I wasn't too sure about my next move. But now I've got it sorted, and I'm ready to make my comeback. Hey champ, you got a minute? Mind if I talk to you for a sec? Mind if I step inside? Yo dad, my door's not a UFC fighter, it didn't deserve that knockout. Next time, just let me handle it. Anyway, you can come on in. Thanks son. So, what's the matter dad? Do you know anything about sex and gender? What the frick? Yes, I do, I mean, who doesn't, there are just men and women, or maybe something in between, like, gay and lesbian, right? No, you are wrong. What, why? Because yesterday. Okay, it feels like ages since we last caught up, great seeing you again my brother. Good to see you too, my brother. How you've been doing lately, all good, got yourself a wife and the little one yet? Ha ha ha, it's just a prank bro, I know that you are super gay, how can I forget that? Sure thing, but guess what, I'm not gay anymore. Wow, that's fantastic. I mean, it's a bit unexpected to hear that. Understandable, I'm now more than gay, I have a new gender identity, and we just have ourselves a new update. Okay, but who are we here? The 2SLGBTQQIPAA community. Ahem, ahem, sorry, what was that again? Okay, okay, I can't remember it anyway, I'll keep LGBT for now. So, what's your gender right now, if you don't mind sharing? I'm now genderqueer, which means I'm not either male or female. So, you're gender weird, well, that makes sense, sure, I also think, you guys keep getting weirder recently. Bro, it's gender queer, not weird. Oh, my bad. So do you know your gender identity? Certainly a man, but I gotta ask my son about this, you make me feel a bit confused now. So I'm off, see you later bro. So that's why you're here questioning me. Well dad truth is, I'm not really sure about it either, I'm cool with people evolving and doing what makes them happy, but I think it's time to take a serious look at it. I'll check things out dad, so be sure to come back next week, and we'll talk it through. Now I'm become Death, the destroyer of worlds. Yo, son, what the hell is happening here? What kind of outfit is that? You're not Oppenheimer, kid. Yes, but I'm now Open Homo, the destroyer of sex. Interesting. So, shall we begin to discuss our problem today? Alright, Dad, let us cook. As far as I know, these days gender isn't just a two-option deal, people don't always neatly fit into just man or woman labels, some see it more like a spectrum, ranging from man to woman, they're ditching the binary because it doesn't cover all the non-binary identities they fit into, and people use all sorts of labels to describe their gender identity. Before we get into it, let me give you a quick rundown on linguistics, imagine language and words as mental storage boxes we use them to hold info about things like events and objects, this helps us organize our thoughts and recall stuff without reliving it all every time, it's kind of like having a box labeled, stones, we don't have to take out a stone every time we want to talk about them. Thus, to understand each other, we need to reach a consensus on the meanings of things, basically, we need to change the way we perceive words so that we can understand and avoid unnecessary conflicts in our interpretations, for example, if your idea of a cat is like this, and mine is like this, then we're not really on the same page. Now, when we talk about gender and sexuality, there are a ton of terms to grasp before delving into more profound aspects. Trust me, it's going to be a bit of a wild ride, so don't lose focus on what I'm about to lay out. Hey wait, what if I don't agree the same way you do on those terms? Alright, so we kick back and tackle the basics first you know, until we're on the same page at the core. Yes, King. Now let's start with the basics so when we move on to the rest it'll be a piece of cake. To commence, let's begin with the concepts of gender and sex in general. 
While often used interchangeably, strictly speaking, sex is assigned at birth and refers to biological characteristics such as reproductive anatomy, chromosomes, and hormones that we are born with. Simply put, it's our natural reproductive organs labeled either as male or female. On the other hand, gender has a broader and more complex definition. It's not solely determined by biology but also influenced by cultural and social factors such as norms, expectations, and roles, fundamentally sex is more fixed, gender is more flexible, socially constructed, and extends beyond mere reproductive organs. You can only change sex through surgery, while gender can change as you live. This is even more true for people who identified as gender fluid, which basically means their gender identity and expression change over time, even from day to day, from cisgender to non-binary or transgender back and forth. Hey, hold up, can I ask a question? So, with that definition about gender and sex, shouldn't we just call people who have surgery to change their sex as transsexual people instead of transgender? Yes, back in the day, transsexual was used to accurately describe those who had medical interventions as part of their gender transition, but nowadays, we simply use transgender, which covers a wider range, whether someone's had surgery or not, if they're transitioning genders, they're considered transgender, for the sake of simplicity. Many of us are cisgender, which basically means our gender identity matches the sex we were born with. Alright, let's move on to the next terms, gender roles, and stereotypes. Both are related terms but when it comes to roles, it typically revolves around predetermined, often unspoken principles and assumptions established by dominant cultural norms and traditions. Simply put, they represent a set of rules, guidelines, expectations, and responsibilities deemed acceptable, appropriate that are dictated and required based on one's gender. Speaking about the word gender, you might have a slight confusion now. While we now understand that gender is more than just man and woman, let's consider the definition of roles from the perspective of the common majority, which often thinks in binary terms, either man or woman, and no more when mentioning gender. Now come to, stereotypes, essentially, in simple terms, are oversimplified and potentially inaccurate statements, beliefs, or suppositions regarding others or subjects. They represent how we expect and believe someone or things to be based on certain criteria and conditions that we recognize from them, it's a type of heuristic, a mental shortcut in psychological terms, they are neither entirely bad nor fully optimized. Yes, traditional values are near and dear to me. However, if overused without enough awareness, they can lead to unfair, biased judgments, disagreements, and conflicts. So, be careful with assumptions about others. Now, let's discuss the two most important terms, the gender binary, and the gender spectrum. And for the sake of conciseness, I'll abbreviate them respectively as GBF and GSF, which stand for Gender Binary Framework and Gender Spectrum Framework. So, both are two related concepts, but they differ in their core ideas and views on gender identity, the GBF categorizes gender into two distinct options, male and female, or more specifically, man and woman identity, each associated with certain traditional societal roles characterized by masculine and feminine traits, correspondingly. And you might wonder, what are societal roles or masculine and feminine traits? Well, to simplify things, here is a short list for you to take a look at. Simple, isn't it? Short and long hair, submissive and dominant, weak and strong, dependent and independent, and so on. On the other hand, the GSF acknowledges that gender is not limited to just two options, rather, it exists along a continuum, embracing a diverse spectrum of identities. This perspective has led to the use of gender-neutral pronouns, such as ZE, XE, B, which are quite common in the LGBT community alongside the three common gender pronouns, he, she, they. These pronouns are used by people who don't feel they belong to the categories of he or she and who prefer not to use they, however, it's worth noting that these neopronouns are not standardized and widely recognized for now, they are more of a personal preference than a specific pronoun for a particular gender identity. In the GBF, sex refers to male and female according to biological aspects, which is similar to the GSF, although both are similar regarding the definition of sex, in terms of gender identity, there are not only significant differences but also some similarities between the two, which often lead to confusion. In the GBF, man and woman are the only two officially recognized gender identities, in casual conversation, we often hear people referring to being male or female as their identity, even though these terms technically refer to sex rather than gender identity, it's just the interpretation that sex determines gender if you consider it from the perspective of the GBF. It might be acceptable to interchange and implicitly conflate sex with gender from the perspective of the GBF, where only two gender identities correspond to two sexes. However, this can lead to complications and confusion, especially when attempting to explain the GSF, if you don't understand the distinction well. Therefore, it's really beneficial to know this difference initially to avoid confusion between sex and gender. People often use the terms male and female, implicitly referring to man and woman identities, to explain other identities within the GSF. This unawareness in assumptions and generalization of the difference between sex and gender can lead to significant confusion, even incomprehension. 
Here is an example to understand what I mean more easily, take a look at a common explanation about gender like this one. Cisgender individuals whose gender identity corresponds with the sex assigned for them at birth, while transgender and non-binary people are individuals who may identify as male or female, but may not neatly fit into the categories of man or woman, or of male or female. With a cursory read, you might not notice anything, but upon closer examination, it's just become too confused for you to truly understand anything. Firstly, which identity and which sex correspond to each other? Secondly, male and female refer to sex, so what do they mean by fitting into male and female? Isn't it that sex assigned to us naturally at birth? And what mean by fitting into it? Thirdly, what do they mean by man and woman, and are male and female the same thing? But by using what we have already discussed, everything will start to make sense. And to be honest, you can understand cisgender essentially as another name for the GBF, but now considered as one type of gender identity within the broader and more comprehensive framework, the GSF, rather than being treated as the sole framework anymore. The reason for this is simple, to make it easier for other genders to be represented and distinguished. For example, differentiate between a transgender man and a cisgender man, or a transgender non-binary individual, or any other gender identity. The reason for this awkwardness is that there are terms and facts that should be universal fundamentals instead of exclusive to a specific framework, when referring to gender and sex, terms like man and woman are often mainly associated with the gender binary framework due to its predominance throughout a long period of history and its binary essence. Additionally, there are no clear definitions of a man and woman in the GSF that are officially defined or at least cited in relation to the GBF, this lack of clarity and consensus makes it difficult to determine which term belongs to which framework and which one we are referring to. Now come to another term, gender expression, as obvious as it seems, it is the way people express themselves through their appearance, behavior, demeanor, mannerisms. A very common example of this is having a stereotypically feminine or masculine appearance associated with casual hair and clothes that are considered defaults for your natural sex. If you are comfortable accepting it that way, then your expression is the type that you express and is also gender conforming. One more important term is sexual orientation, which refers to whom you're attracted to romantically or sexually. There are several types of sexual orientations, including heterosexuality, attraction to people of a different gender, homosexuality, attraction to the same gender, bisexuality, attraction to more than one gender, and asexuality, little or no sexual attraction to others. For example, a heterosexual man attracted solely to women and femininity is called gynophilia, and a heterosexual woman attracted solely to men and masculinity is called androphilia. On top of that, gay is a sexual orientation, which refers to same-sex individual attraction, often used by men, while lesbian specifically describes women attracted to other women. Some women may prefer using gay instead. Finally, there's queer, which is an umbrella term used to describe individuals who do not identify as heterosexual or cisgender or either. Feeling confused now? Yes no one doesn't. Finally, there are still a few straightforward terms about gender and sex like, gender dysphoria, intersex and intersectionality, you might hear about them a lot, or they could be totally new to you, but they're super important when discussing gender and sex. Now, moving on to gender dysphoria, it's not primarily about differences in sex or gender, instead, it's more about a mental health issue linked to feeling like you're male, female, or something else that doesn't match the sex you were assigned at birth, it's a battle between who you want to be and who you seem to be. To simplify, here are a few examples I found on the internet. Let's move on to another term, the intersex, which refers to individuals born with differences in their biology, like chromosomes, internal organs, hormones, or body parts, that don't fit the usual male or female categories, these differences can make it tricky or impossible to say they're strictly one or the other, based on what most people have at birth, typically the characteristics shared by the majority of us. This is one of the key arguments used to support gender spectrum theory. The last term is intersectionality, which is a theory, a framework, that seeks to understand how various social identities intersect and interact with one another. It acknowledges that individuals can have multiple identities, spanning not only in gender but also society, politics, race, ethnicity, class, background, disability, and more, it examines how these intersections contribute to experiences of oppression, privilege, and discrimination. It basically means that we have numerous and diverse aspects of our identity, socially, politically, etc., not merely one. None of us are merely one sort of thing, and it affects our experience as individuals in our society. Here is a very general example, black people are normally already subjected to more discrimination than people of other races, this discrimination can be further exacerbated by factors such as their background, gender, and socioeconomic status. Okay, I reckon that's enough to cover the basics of gender and sex and I think it pretty much covers what we usually talk about in these topics. So now we come to the main part, which is also the final topic of this video, and it's actually pretty easy if you've been paying attention to what I've been saying since the beginning. Let's get started, so, there are basically 11 widely recognized gender identities, which include specific and general one. 
These consist of, cisgender, transgender, non-binary, genderqueer, agender, gender fluid, bigender, demigender, polygender, pangender, and androgynous. Additionally, there are many more obscure and interesting genders, such as aerogender, aesthetogender, amarigender, amicogender, anxigender, astrogender, astralgender, autogender, biogender, gender, cloud gender, and gender blank, and so forth and so on, and, to be honest, it sounds like picking your factions and jobs in RPG game. Let us waste no more time. Let me quickly break down what those genders mean, and then we'll wrap up this video. Cisgender means individuals whose gender identity aligns with their assigned sex at birth, typically adhering to traditional societal norms of being a man or a woman, though they may express themselves differently, they usually don't completely go against these norms, it's a very common gender identity that applies to most people, look at that guy, he's an average male and identifies as a cisgender man. Transgender is an umbrella term that describes individuals whose gender identity differs from the sex they were assigned at birth, without specifying any further criteria beyond this basic definition. Essentially, you can consider the majority, if not all, gender identities except cisgender as a subset of transgender. Non-binary and genderqueer, technically they have the very same meaning and are often used interchangeably, it's a personal preference for individuals to use either term, and both are umbrella terms that refer to gender identities outside the traditional binary classification of male or female. In other words, they reject the traditional man and woman roles that are expected and given based on their biological sex. Both are subsets of transgender because individuals who identify as non-binary or genderqueer indicate that their gender identity does not align with either female or male, they may identify as both, or as somewhere in between. This implies that they are not cisgender and thus fall within the transgender spectrum. However, while all non-binary and genderqueer people are also transgender, the vice versa is not always true, as there might be cases where individuals, after transitioning, identify as a trans man or a trans woman, their sexes might not align with cis men or cis women, but they still strictly adhere to the traditional norms and standards of being a man or woman, which they do not reject and thus do not fall outside the binary term. Now come to a gender, it is about someone who experiences a lack of gender identity or a sense of being without gender. This is B, who prefers to simply be themselves without any gendered expectations or labels, which mean they are don't have a gender and they feel okay with that, they may choose to use they, them pronouns or other neutral pronouns. The gender fluid is a non-fixed gender identity that shifts over time or depending on the situation, whether it be daily, monthly, etc. Here is F, some days, F feels most comfortable presenting as a man, on other days, F might feel more aligned with feminine side. Now regarding bigender it's a term that describes a person who identifies as having two genders, either simultaneously or shifting between them, while demigender is about someone who identifies partially as one gender and partially as another, or as having a fluctuating connection to a particular gender. It shares similarities with bigender but the different here is demigender does not encompass both genders entirely, only partially. As for polygender, pangender, while one is about having multiple genders simultaneously, another is about who identifies with all genders at the same time. Finally, androgynous refers to a gender expression or appearance that combines both masculine and feminine characteristics, as such, androgynous individuals can also be non-binary and genderqueer at times. So, that covers the most common gender identities, now, I'll provide a glimpse of some interesting gender identities I've already mentioned, I'll just go through them very quickly and briefly, there are many more, but I'll only cover a small portion of them, you can learn more about them on the internet, it's really easy to find information and understand them now, if you have been following what I've been saying since the beginning. Let's start with aerogender, which is, a gender identity that is influenced by the environment or atmosphere. Now come to aesthetogender, a gender identity that is based on personal aesthetics or the perception of beauty. Next is amarigender, a gender identity that changes depending on who the person is in love with. Amicogender, a gender identity that is affected by one's friendships. Anxigender, a gender identity influenced by anxiety. Literally me. Astrogender and astralgender, one is a gender identity that feels bright, shining, and star-like another is a gender identity connected to the cosmos or outer space. Yeah, I also think those two guys are kind of similar. Autogender, a gender identity that is closely tied to autism. Biogender, a gender identity closely tied to one's biological characteristics. Healgender, a gender identity that brings healing or comfort to oneself or others. Cloudgender, a gender identity that feels soft and nebulous like a cloud. Gender blank, a gender identity that feels undefined or lacking in specificity. So that it is, I think it's enough for today. I'm exhausted now. I never thought it would turn out to be this complex. Now I need to rest before I go crazy. Thanks for watching.